Fujifilm Instax Mini Evo. Unboxing and setup. On the front of the box, we have a picture of the camera with a print coming out of it. On this side, we have sample images of the different effects, 10 lens effects and 10 film effects. So all together, 10 by 10 is 100 different expressions. On the back of the box, we have a picture of the front of the camera, the back of the camera showing the LCD screen. So this is a hybrid digital camera with an Instax printer fused inside. A couple pictures of the details and different functions that this camera can do. It can do high quality prints. The print quality should be improved compared to previous models. It can print directly from smartphones. Now it has the ability to save printed images with all the effects and the Instax border on it. And also has the ability to do remote shooting. On this side we have just an example picture of a lens effect light leak and film effect sepia. It shows you that the lens dial is used to select the lens effect and the film dial is used to choose the film effects. On the bottom of the box, we just have some specifications and the barcode. Okay, so let's open the camera and see what's inside. It has an easy flap. So here's the camera and the bubble wrap. We'll save that for later. Then we have manuals, we'll open those. This is a charging cable, this is a micro USB. A strap. That's it. So let's unwrap each piece separately. So the manual is not very big. Here we have some general precautions on how to handle the film. Here's a contact sheet for all the different uh, Fujifilm uh, country representatives in Europe. Because I bought this in Switzerland. So the manual is very simple, it's in lots of different languages. So there isn't much written about the camera in each language. So the English portion only has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen pages. Here is the charging cable. It's a standard USB-C type of uh, charging cable. This is a micro USB charging cable. This end goes into the camera and this type A goes into a computer or a charging brick. A charging brick does not come with this camera, so I have to use one from your iPhone or your other smartphone. And here's the strap, let's open it up. It's like a faux letter type strap. It says Instax here. Uh, it doesn't say Evo anywhere, it just says Instax. It's pretty good quality, it should be more than sufficient for such a light camera. All right, so let's open the camera. It's nicely packed in the bubble wrap so it doesn't get hurt in the transport. There it is, what a beauty. I think this is the best looking Instax camera that I've ever had. My previous favorite was the Instax Mini 90, but I think the Instax Mini Evo looks even better. It looks super nice from the front. One thing to know is that the lens isn't protected from scratching. For example, on the other film cameras, the Instax Mini 90 and the Instax Mini 11, there is a protector over the lens when you're not taking the pictures. So the camera is very light and it's pretty much completely made out of plastic. But I don't mind, it looks cool. Uh, I didn't really expect this to be built like a tank. It's only $200 um, and I do like the aesthetic quite a bit. One thing to know is that the battery is built inside. So once the battery goes bad, you'll have to probably get a new camera. Okay, so let's have an overview of the camera. So here is the lens. This is the lens effect selector dial that turns around and makes a clicky noise. Here's the on off switch. This is the selfie mirror. Here is one of the shutter buttons. The red one is a AF assist lamp. And here is the LED flash. Here's a nice decal that says Instax Mini Evo. Here are some other decals that says Fujifilm. And this is kind of a model after the X100 series. It says Instax hybrid camera. From this side, we have the film effect selector dial. Here's a cold shoe, for example, for mounting an LED light. This little button clears all the lens and film effect settings. Here's another shutter button. This right here is the coolest part of the camera. When you pull the lever, you print the picture. It has a super satisfying click to it. On the bottom, we have a tripod socket. Here we have the ID of the camera. That's important if you are pairing into a Fujifilm digital camera or your iPhone. On this side here, we have a hidden compartment. Here's the charging port and the slot for micro SD card. This camera still has the protective sheet on the back of the camera, so let's peel that off. So on the back of the camera, we have a latch to open the film door. Here we have a menu OK button and a four-way selector, back button, image preview button, and a plus button. So to set up the camera, the first thing you need to do is to charge the camera. 
So you open this flap right here. Here's the charging port and use the supplied micro SB uh, charging cable to charge the camera. When you're charging the camera, this red light will light up and when the charging is complete, it will turn off. To turn on the camera, we flip the switch. So the next thing you wanna do is to set the time and date. So you go to menu, scroll down to time and date, select the date format that you like. So I like year, month, and uh, day and then select the proper date. Once you have the correct date and time, you hit OK. If you are in the shooting menu and hit the back button, so it shows you the time, the date, the currently selected uh, lens, uh, the film effect, print mode you, you're doing, and how many pictures do you have remaining. It shows me that I have enough uh, digital storage for another 44 pictures. The internal storage can hold 45 images, and I don't have any film in the camera yet, so it shows me that I have zero prints left. The internal storage is super small at 45 images. So I highly recommend that you buy a, a small micro SD card so you can take as many images as you like. So let's now insert a micro SD card. So the smallest micro SD card that I could find was 128 gigabytes. But as I said, you don't need a big micro SD card. The images that the Instax Mini Evo takes are super small. They're only five megapixel images and the average size is about 1.3 megabytes. So even a one gig card will give you about 800 images. All right, so let's insert the micro SD card. Have the writing of the micro SD card facing you, then have the back of the camera facing you, and then insert the micro SD card like this. It's pretty hard to get it inside. You have to use a fingernail to squeeze it all the way. Hopefully you can see it there. We should be good to go. And then after that, you cover the flap. So now let's check how many digital images we can take. So we go to the back button. And now you can see that I can take more than 100,000 digital images. I took a selfie of myself and now if I try to print it, it tells me that I don't have any film in there. So we got to load some film. The Instax Mini Evo uses the Instax Mini Film. One of the great things about the Instax Mini Film is that it comes in lots of different varieties. So here I have stained glass, uh, one with black border, the, this air mail uh, themed one. And this one is really nice, this is the rainbow color. So all the different uh, frames have different colors. To load film first, we have to get it out of this uh, foil pouch like this. On the back of the camera, we have a latch to open the film door. So to open the film door is a little bit tricky. You have to slide it over and then open it up. Then locate the yellow dot here locate the yellow dot on the film, align the yellow dots, and then we just close the film door. It will automatically eject the dark slide. This is just a protective sheet of plastic that protects the film from being exposed before you take a picture. You can throw this away. So now when I turn on the camera and go to play, it will show me 10 white dots. So that means I have 10 films to go. So once you load the film, you don't want to open this film latch until all the film is used up. All right, so let's go through all the different shooting modes. So I'll turn on the camera and uh, let's put a little subject here. So let's say our little in Instax Mini. Now I'm going to twist the ring around the lens to see all the different lens effects. So the first one is normal. Then we have vignette, soft focus, blur, Fisheye, color shift, light leak, mirror. So that's an interesting effect. It kind of mirrors it out so you get the image twice. Then double exposure. So for this one, you take a picture like this. Then it will give you an overlay. It's a little bit slow. And then you can take another picture like that. And now you have a double exposure. And then the last one is half frame. So it's similar. You get to take two pictures and each one takes half of the frame. So here I take a picture of the camera. And then for the second one, let's say I'll turn, open the camera and take another one. There. Now let's run through all the different film effects. So we have normal, vivid, Pale, Canvas, Monochrome, Sepia, Yellow, Red, 
blue, and retro. Now we are back to the normal lens. The up and down buttons zoom in and out on the picture. Okay. And the left and right buttons go through different options. So here we have flash options, auto flash, forced flash, suppressed flash. Here we have macro on and off. We can set the white balance. So that's a new thing. Uh, exposure compensation, plus or minus two stops. And the self timer. You can do two second and 10 second self timer. If we push the, if we push the back button, it gives us information about the camera. And this plus button lets us save our favorite preset. So here I have the mirror with monochrome. If I want to save it to my favorites, I hit OK. Now it's going to say, be saved as my favorite too. So I hit OK. And it's confirmed as my favorite number two. To recall the favorites, we hit the plus button. Then we hit it again. And then we can scroll between our favorites. So here I have a favorite one, favorite two, and favorite three I have in a science, normal, normal. So in total, there are three favorites. And lastly, in the shooting menu, we go to menu and it gives us all the different detail options. So we can choose face detection, AF illuminator, Bluetooth settings, the print quality, print brightness, daytime settings, date stamp, language, sound setup, auto power off, reset, format, and firmware update. So when we go to the image review, we get different menus. The top and bottom of the four-way controllers still do the same thing, so they zoom, so you can zoom in, then we can position the picture. The side button to switch between pictures. When you press the image review button again, it zooms out of the pictures. So here it shows you four different pictures at a time, and here it shows you even uh, nine bit different pictures at a time. If you push the plus button, nothing happens. If you push the effects reset button, nothing happens. So let's go dive deep into the menus. So here we can erase images, rotate images, copy between the card and the internal memory, Bluetooth settings, print quality mode again, print brightness, and similar as the other ones. One really important thing to know is that if you want these special effects like the lens effects or the film effects, you have to do it while you're taking the pictures. So I can go to my already taken pictures with the normal lens and add the special effects afterwards. You have to do them while you're shooting which is kind of nice. It's uh, more like a film-like experience as opposed to just editing on your phone. So now let's go ahead and print some pictures. So once you find the picture that you want to print, so let's say this one, you just print on this level right here. And then we'll take a moment to prepare the picture. It's not instantaneous for sure. This will take a couple minutes to develop. Let's also make a print from the phone. So first we have to download the app. To download the app, we go to the Apple Store. We go search Instax Evo. Here it is, Instax Mini Evo. Let's say get that. Now we go open. Yes, we would like to use Bluetooth. Let's turn the camera. Okay. Say allow, let's say allow access to all photos, agree, let's set it up. Now we're looking for the camera, let's see if we can turn it off, Bluetooth settings, pairing registration, okay, now it's searching, alright, so it, it found the camera, so let's say connect, yes. Okay, we should be con we should be all good now. So to print pictures from the iPhone, we go to uh, direct print. Okay, and then we select image. So I have a picture in an album that says Instax Evo. So hit that. If I want to resize it, I can pinch it in my fing fingers, but that looks pretty good. Actually, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I don't think I'm gonna change anything else. And then if I want to print, I just hit print right here. Now it's transferring between the phone and the camera. And now it says printing and now it's coming out. So here are the fully developed prints. This one was straight out of the Instax Evo and this was printed from a phone. So let's look at some other features that the app allows you to do. So the app shows you uh, how much battery you have left in the camera and also how many prints you have left. 
So I showed you the direct print. Here you can also do a remote shooting. So you can see OK. And now if I turn this on, the phone sees what the camera sees. So I can take pictures from the phone directly like this. There you go. I don't want to print this one, so cancel. The next option is something that's new that wasn't originally on the Instax Mini Leapplay, but they added in the latest fir firmware. So now it allows you to transfer images from the camera that you already printed to your phone. So in order to do so, you have to go to the review images, and then you go to menu, and then you go to printed image transfer. And now you can see my images. So both of them are there. The one I printed directly from a phone and also the one I printed from uh, the Evo. So in order to transfer the images, I select it and then I hit plus. And now it's transferring from the camera to the phone. What's cool that now I have it in here, I can do some more editing on this. So I can print it again, but I, I can also edit and save. So I can change the background behind the, the border You can also do no background and use, you can also select a background image. Let's do like a flower and then you can hit OK. And now that image is going to be in my ca uh, camera roll. One big limitation is that it only allows you to transfer images that have been already printed. So it really makes you to uh, use a lot of film, which is probably good for Fuji. I'll try to look for some workarounds so we don't have to print all the images in order to transfer them to the phone. So let's compare the Instax Mini Evo to the other cameras in the Instax Mini lineup. So here's the Instax Mini Evo and the Instax Mini Leapplay, which is kind of the closest camera to the Mini Evo. Uh, they're styled quite a bit differently. The Mini Evo is like a retro styling and the uh, Mini Leapplay is uh, pretty elegant, but I think it's gonna be appealing to more uh, younger audience and it's pretty feminine. Mini Leapplay is actually a little bit smaller from the front. Um, the Evo is a little bit wider. Here from the top, we have the film ejection slots. As you can see again here how much wider the Evo is compared to the Leapplay. On the back, we have a very similar layout. You have the film latch, uh, you have the buttons, but on the top, it's very different. There's nothing here. Here we have the selection for the film effect. Here we have the really cool lever, and also the Evo has two shutter buttons. The Leapplay only has one shutter button in the same position as this one. They both use LED flashes. The Leapplay also has this uh, voice record function. They made quite a big deal about it in the promotional materials two years ago, but I have never really used it after the re I'd made my original review. They both have uh, selfie mirrors, but you can see how different they are. The lens, as far as I know, is the same. It's a 28 millimeter equivalent with the f2.0 but it uses a very small CMOS sensor. They both take five megapixel images. So the Evo is about $200 and the Leapplay is about $160. Unless you have a strong preference about the design, I highly recommend the Evo over the Leapplay. It's just a newer camera. It looks cooler. It has a lot of the tactile functions and I, uh, I think it's a better buy at this moment. There's a little bit of difference on how the cameras are operated. They both have film effects. So here you use this uh, wheel to have all the different film effects. Here on the Instax uh, Leapplay, you also have different film effects. So you go to uh, the bottom and you say no filter and stylish with it a fisheye. So it's pretty similar. You have a little bit less than on the Evo, but it's similar. The big difference is that the Evo has the lens effect. So that's with, the, with this ring right here. The Leapplay does not have the lens effect. But what the Leapplay does have is frames. So once you find a picture that you like, you can go up and then you can add different frames. So here's an example of what the frames look like. If you really like this look and you don't care about the other things that the Instax Evo has, then I would suggest the Leapplay for the frames. One important thing to know is that the Evo has a much better screen on the back of the camera. Even when I got the Leapplay uh, two years ago, I immediately noticed how bad the screen was, especially compared to modern smartphones. It is a much better experience to use the high resolution screen on the Instax Mini Evo. Here's a view from the top. Here's a view from this side. Here's a few from the bottom. The Leapplay doesn't have a tripod socket. The Evo has a tripod socket. On this side, the Evo doesn't have anything except the charging uh, port and the SD card port. Here, the Leapplay has buttons. So this is the power button. And these are the favorites uh, for the effects. 
So now let's compare the Instax Mini Evo to the Instax Mini 90 Neo Classic. They look pretty similar, but they're actually drastically different devices. Uh, the Evo is a hybrid camera, so essentially it's a digital camera with a printer fused into one device. The Mini 90 is a true analog camera. There's no digital conversion. Light travels through the lens and straight onto the film. So this is how they look from the front. The Evo is a little bit taller, but a little bit skinnier. The Mini 90 is a little bit wider. This is how they look from the top. You can see that the Evo is skinnier and the difference becomes even more pronounced when you turn on the camera. Now the Instax Mini 90 is turned on, you can see how far the lens sticks out. One thing that's similar between the Evo and the 90 is that they both have two shutter buttons. So they have a shutter button here and also a shutter button here. From the bottom, they're also very similar. They have a tripod socket in the same location. And from the back, they're obviously very different. Since the Evo is a digital camera, it has an LCD screen to show you where you're taking pictures of. The Instax Mini 90 has a little tiny um, screen that just shows you uh, what effects you have turned on and how many pictures you have left. One thing that's nice about the Mini 90 that has a removable battery, so you can charge it externally. And if this battery dies, you can buy a new battery and uh, replace it. I'll do a comparison and image quality between these two cameras. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. So the Evo is $200 and the Mini 90 is about $120. And now let's compare the Instax Mini Evo to the Instax Mini 11, which is probably the most popular camera on the market right now, uh, mostly because it's cheap and it comes in lots of different colors. So again, very different cameras. This is a pretty sophisticated camera that's a digital camera fused with a printer. The Instax Mini 11 is the simplest camera you can imagine. It has essentially no controls. So this is how they look from the front. The Mini 90 is significantly more chunky. This is how they look from the side. The Mini 11 uses simple AA batteries. So those are pretty easy to change. You don't have to deal with the charging and uh, stuff like that. This is how they look from the bottom. Here you can clearly see how much chunkier the Instax Mini 11 is. This is how they look from the back. So as I said, the Mini 11 has no controls. It just is the film door. Here's a film counter and there are no controls anywhere on the camera except the shutter button and the selfie mode. This is how they look from the top when the Instax Mini is turned on and the lens is extended. The Instax Mini Evo is $200, the Instax Mini 11 is $69. So here we have all four of the major Instax Mini cameras uh, currently on the market. The Evo, Play, the 90 and the 11. The prices are $200, $160, $120, $70. These two here are hybrid cameras. So they take digital images and then they print them onto the Instax film. These two here are analog cameras. So there's no digital images taken. They, uh, the light travels through the lens straight onto the film and then the camera ejects the picture. I think every camera has its place on the market. The Instax Mini Evo is definitely tailored to uh, people who want a hybrid camera and are more advanced and the more serious about photography because it gives you a lot more options. If you want an analog experience and you're more experienced in photography, definitely get the Instax Mini 90. If you are more from the younger crowd and uh, you like the styling of the Lee Play, you can definitely get the Lee Play, but the Evo has a much better LCD screen, which makes the experience uh, a lot more enjoyable. And then for kids, I would probably recommend the Instax Mini 11 because it's such a simple camera and fun to use and you don't want something really complicated for kids which will kind of turn them away from photography. If you found this video useful, please give it a like. Consider subscribing. I have a lot more videos about the Instax cameras coming up. If you want me to talk about any of these cameras on the table and compare them uh, between the two, let me know. I'll make a video about that.